Welcome to Illuminations, a program of study designed to guide you through the basic tools one needs to become a better painter. We intend to shed light on the theories, tools, and techniques that provide this foundation. Many of the subjects we will explore seem to confuse even experienced painters when they're trying to do everything at once. Every stroke applied to a painting must exhibit the knowledge of composition, color, value, edge, linear and aerial perspective. That's a tall order for a beginner, yet that's exactly what many try to do when they start painting. Actually, all these concepts are simple to understand when they're studied out of the context of trying to execute a painting. Join me for the entire Illumination series for a good basic introduction to the theory, tools, methods, and techniques every painter can use. Look at these two simple compositions, one executed in the tonalist style and the other in the colorist style. Each has a unique quality. The tonalist painting has more impact through the use of chiaroscuro, that is, strong light and dark contrast, but the colorist painting has more color interest. The tonalist painting retains its strength when reduced to a black and white image, while the colorist painting loses its impact. The two schools of painting present different concepts in their imagery. The tonalists paint the effect of light, and the colorists paint the temperature of colors. Which is better is strictly in the eye of the beholder. Comparing the two setups with different color light sources, however, we notice that the shadows in the setup lit with the warm light are cooler than the same cast shadows in the cool light setup. The red cloth produces different colors in the cast shadows and a warmer relative temperature to the shadows in the blue example, but comparing red to red under different light temperatures is really what we want to observe. Consider this open interior courtyard that has plenty of sunlight and deep cast shadows. The sunlight is warm by definition and the cast shadows are definitely cool. But look at the open shadows up under the arched portico. They are intensely warm, more so than the blanched out walls that are struck by sunlight. This oil sketch, executed on location here a few years earlier and not from a photograph, correctly interprets the relative temperature seen in both the cast shadows and in the great interior colonnades of mostly open shadows. All openings into buildings, whether they are open doorways or open windows, should be rendered as warm tones, not cool ones, to accurately represent the temperature that exists in these situations. Compare how this scene looks through the camera with the way I sense the colors at the scene. The painting shows so much more color interest than the photograph, and I assure you I didn't invent all the colors. They were there for inspiration. Oh, perhaps I exaggerated them a bit, but they were there in one degree or another. This painting, also executed on location during the same time period, shows a completely different color scheme and range of temperatures, something that occurred naturally and was unplanned. The individual location suggests its own treatment and color choices along with color and temperature choices for the light and shadow areas. Compare this scene with one taken in bright midday sunlight. The times of day are similar, but the cloud cover in the one on the left allows us to see the rich color, while the bright sunlight in the scene on the right washes out much of the color. Another kind of atmospheric condition that affects the temperature of lights and shadows is the foggy or misty day. This effect is seen when the clouds lay heavily on the earth and the water vapor obscures distant objects. It's quite an ethereal effect and can be intriguing to paint. Contrary to what we see on the high overcast day, the colors and values on the foggy day are very close and muted. A colorist approach could render this scene very effectively with clothes. What we do see when we look into the shadows is something like this. By overexposing the photograph and throwing all the light values too light, we can see more detail in the shadows, which is what the human eye would see when we focus in this small area. 
But if we put the two together in one photograph, we get something that looks more like this, what our eye actually sees. The cast shadow is there, but it isn't as dark as indicated in the initial photograph. This is the type of change that you must make when you work strictly from photographs, if you want your work to be believable. We can distort a lot of things in paintings and get away with it by artistic license. But paintings from a photograph with no regard to what we really see is not an artistic exercise. It's a slavish copying of a not very good source to begin with. As long as you recognize and use these basic elements, your paintings will take on a new authority and credibility. If you've collected all the programs in this series, you should be able to approach your canvas with a new confidence and express your own visions in paint more successfully. Join me for future programs designed to build on this foundation by exploring more of the challenges we face as artists. Until then, practice painting. <laughs>